Hi. Welcome to Three Crosses Farrier Company. Today, we're trimming an English Shire Cross. Wait to the end of the video to see what he looks like and see his story and see the barn where we're trimming. So start with, we're gonna clean it out and you'll look right there in the commissure, we've got a big rock. I've had several comments in past videos as to why aren't these hooves cleaned out? Why aren't they checked every day? How could a rock get stuck in the foot like that? These horses aren't like a lot of horses that are in barns or in stables where they're in a very controlled environment. These horses are on pasture and some of these pastures are over 100 acres. In that case, you will only see the horse once a day when he comes to water. And sometimes when that happens, you won't notice things like this. These horses are very well taken care of. The owners check on them frequently. They're seen every day. Um, but if the problem isn't an immediately apparent, then it might not be noticed. In some cases, the horse can self-clean out. When he's moving, he'll move the dirt out much like a wild horse would and exfoliate his soul and do everything he should naturally. In other cases, it doesn't, and if it becomes a problem, it's noticed by the owner and it's taken care of. I'm hoping this clears up some comments that we've had. I'm using a loop knife here. I happen to love my loop knives. It can work both sides of the frogs, clean the commissures out. One of the things about trimming horses that are out on pasture, especially these rocky pastures where we live, is you cannot trim them too short. If you trim them too short, they will be sore. The other thing is you shouldn't take out all the sole. You shouldn't pare that sole down. Because if you pare the sole down, they lose thickness and then they step on a rock, they bruise the foot, and we have a whole nother set of problems to deal with. Now, when I run my nippers, I've said in other videos, you have to run your nippers flat as you can. These particular nippers are an older style nipper that I had rebuilt a year ago, and I'm not impressed with them. They are not cutting worth a darn. In fact, they're harder to cut with than they should be, and so I'm not exactly sure why that would be with this particular nipper. I don't know if it's the, the angle of the jaw or what's going on, but it's definitely not, not my favorite thing. When I'm running my rasp like this, I'm trying to get the hook level. When I say level, that's not meaning taking a level and getting it so that it's perfectly level side to side. That's level of where the horse lands. So when I drop the foot and I look at it, I look to see if the heels are level where the foot naturally rests. If they're not, then I adjust. It doesn't matter if it's level to like the pavement or anything else. It has to be level with where the horse lands. If it's not, then we could cause lameness. And you'll see this a lot in like reiners and, and other disciplines where a horse is stopping super hard. So now we're going to finish up the hoof, run our wrap, take off a little bit of flair. One of the things that I love about this horse is he has an extremely healthy foot. People ask all the time, like, how do horses maintain their feet in the wild? They maintain their feet by moving constantly. This horse moves a lot, not enough to maintain his feet, obviously, because we're here trimming. The other reason that wild horses have such good feet is genetics. If a horse has bad feet, he doesn't survive in the wild, unfortunately. This is a harsh reality of nature, but when there's a weak link, they're usually cold by natural selection. That's one of the cool things about this horse is he has absolutely beautiful feet. Beautiful genetics, big bone, big feet, and he can run on the hillsides. Now this is the other hoof. We're going to trim that up. I really do like these videos with the two hooves in the same video. Super neat. I like seeing both front feet so you can kind of get a feel for the horse. Now, you can see here, look at those bars. Those bars need taken out, cleaned up. Again, you'll see the false sole that hasn't exfoliated. When a horse travels on the ground, that should exfoliate. So in the wild, this would naturally come off. Unfortunately, this horse isn't quite moving enough for that to happen. That's why we're here. It's been super dry, and that's why I'm using my nippers instead of my knife. It gives me a little bit of a jump start, especially on these big horses like this. This horse's hoof is not as big as some of the horses that I do, 
but he's definitely up there in size. Uh, he's probably a size four or three. But he has such good hooves that we haven't ever had to shoe him. Shoeing's a necessary evil. Shoeing, we do it when we have to. It is far better for a horse to be barefoot whenever possible. It's more natural, and it's the way the horse is intended to be. Whenever you add something to the bottom of their feet, it does open up some problems. Look at the, just the beautiful way that hoof cleaned up. Now here I'm using my 14 easy nippers. In, on the other hoof, we were using 15s. But because they were being so difficult to use, I went to my 14s. These are a great nipper, but on these bigger hooves, they're just not quite big enough to cut it. They do make, they're not quite designed for this. Look at the amount of hoof wall we have there. This is a perfect example of what good genetics should look like. A nice wide hoof wall, and if you look, the hoof wall is the same width almost all the way around. Very little flare. This kind of horse is unfortunately disappearing. We have bred horses in captivity for certain disciplines to the exclusion of other qualities. Now, again, flatten the foot a little bit, clean it up, get that all fixed up a little bit, make sure it's level, as I explained earlier, and then we'll swing it forward and start finishing it. Now you can see here that, again, there's a little bit of flare, but not a lot. This is just a really good horse, really great hoof, really good genetics, and he has a great personality. It's important when you're running your rasp to run it in the same direction and the same angle as the other hoof wall. Usually your flare starts about halfway down the hoof wall and that's where we address it. So in previous videos, we've had a ton of comments about the fact that people want to know more about the horses that we're working on, want to know the history behind it, want to know what kind of horse they are. So without further ado, we're going to wrap up the trimming portion of this video and we're going to give you a tour of the barn and we're going to tell you about the horse. So we're out here at Mary Dye and Roger Dye's farm. And I'm going to give you a little tour on the facility today. And I'm also going to introduce you to the horse, which everyone on these videos has been asking for. This is a, a English Shire thoroughbred cross. His name is Flash is a mystery. We call him Majestic. And uh, we bought him as our youngest kid's uh, uh, event horse. And she has now left for college and now he is my old lady's horse that I get to ride because I like to ride pretty horses. Um, it was trained mostly in dressage but he can do little jumps. He's not real fond of it but for me I just like the art of dressage and the beauty of it and he makes me really happy. He's a big moving horse and he's very expressive as you can see. He doesn't hide his emotions at all. <laughs> he wears them on his sleeve for sure. <laughs> and he's about had it with horseshoeing today. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all in the native rock right on the back side, correct? That is the native rock. That's that quarried rock. Uh, this barn is a horse barn that was built in the late 1800s. It was built by hand. It uh, There was a number of timber mills that harvested old growth in the Blue Mountains and it has those timbers that support the barn. It was, it was dug out with horse um, and men shoveling into the wall of the, uh, into the side of a hillside and so half the barn is a rock wall that they did out of a hewn quarry nearby. So it really reflects the history of a lot of the um, buildings and barns of the time. Um, Grandpa John was um, came, came farming here in the 1910 time frame and he ran uh, 44 head of draft horses. They were draft crosses, light drafts that he ran um, his combines and all of his um, farm equipment with horses. He was one of the last farmers in the 1950s to give up horse farming and, 
and bought a crawler tractor at that time. Uh, and so to bring nice horses back into the barn and bring it back to life has been something that I've enjoyed for the last three years. And we've raised a lot of um, event horses in this space and the kids have shown eventing for their whole lives and continue to enjoy um, their horse sports a great deal. And, and I have the uh, event horses that are left over from them and so I'm very spoiled to have very nice horses to ride. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Here on the side you can see all the stalls where they bridled and harnessed 44 headed drafts. This is just an amazing piece of history. On the back wall you can see that native stone. This is just an amazing barn. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Let us know what you want to see next.